All right, so right here we've got a female Australian olive python wrapped around a clutch of eggs. And I figured I would show you guys the process of just getting her off the eggs, uh, getting the eggs in some incubation containers, and talk a little bit about her. Uh, so this is a probably 18 year old female. Uh, I've had her for about 16 or 17 years. Uh, usually I breed her like every two years. Uh, this time, this is basically a three year break that she's had. And it appears to be a pretty good sized clutch. I think the biggest that she's ever had is, uh, I think 17 eggs. And let's see, I don't know if you can see. She's got one lone egg. You can see the size of these things. So I'll get that in a container first. And these females are never usually that bad for me uh, to get off. They're almost like hyper focused on looking after the eggs so I never have them striking out or anything like that they're usually just coiled really tightly around the eggs um, which you'll see I basically just come in and I gently touch them in different areas to get them to unwrap um, but I don't really try and pull them off the eggs if I don't have to so let's see how she's feeling here you can see they'll try and like buck you off almost And sometimes it can be difficult because you'll get them starting to kind of roll the eggs. Here she is, a little bit confused, not too happy. Now I've set her in a tub of water, because something you'll notice with these pythons is after they lay eggs, if you don't wash the smell of the eggs off the snake and the cage, They'll basically just go back to wherever they laid the eggs and they'll go in that tight coil uh, and they'll seem to think that they're still incubating the eggs. So they literally do get like hyper focused on looking after the eggs. Um, this here is what I like to set them up in. It's just a shoebox tote. Now I have a... Uh, one small air hole there and then it's not the best sealing lid and that's kind of how I like to do it and then in the bottom you can see I've just got uh, and this one is perlite I'll use vermiculite sometimes but I've started becoming a bit of a fan of the perlite just a little bit cleaner and then I keep that completely saturated and there's actually standing water in the bottom. I don't know if you can see it, but what I'll do from there is just put uh, this, they call it egg crating or lighting diffuser on top of it. And that just keeps the, the eggs from actually being in the substrate and absorbing too much water. And you can see I place this egg just off the side here. I've got some stones holding it from rolling around. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, I believe. 
as you can see, they stick together in a giant mass. Now, depending how long they've been stuck together, um, the earlier I catch them, the, the easier they come apart. And I caught her laying these eggs around uh, noon this morning. Like they've been sitting here for four hours probably since she finished. And if you just gently work them, take your time, um, but they're not as fragile as you would expect. Um, but take your time and you can usually get them apart pretty easy. Um, it's not necessary, it just makes it a little bit easier to manage them in your incubation containers. Because as you can imagine, I would need a very large container to support this clutch. Yeah, and the olives have very large eggs. Like, they're a large snake, but these eggs are significantly larger than, say, like a ball python egg would be. And I have had eggs rip in the past. But it usually doesn't cause too much of an issue if it's just a small tear. It'll almost heal itself up a little bit. Okay. Get another tub going. I've actually wanted to kind of start using a, a taller tub. Just because you can see like some of these eggs, if they're standing on end, they're too tall for the lid to go on, so you gotta kinda play with your positioning. And with these reptile eggs, if you just catch them and they're early, like, you can rotate them. Um, but the longer the eggs have been sitting, you really don't wanna change the position they're in.
because you can drown that embryo. Big round one. The lighting's kind of hard in this room right now. For some reason, it's real showing up real bright on the camera. But and then these guys are not the shortest incubation. My olive eggs usually take 83 to 85 days to hatch. And I was previously always incubating at 88, whereas I've decided this year to kind of bump my incubation temperature down to 87.4. Um, mainly because I have a hunch it's better for most of the eggs, but also I had a separate incubator for green tree pythons um, just because I was advised to do them at 87.3 and I did uh, and got 100% hatch rate but I would like to keep the green trees in the same incubator as everything else because I wasn't too fond of the one that I put together for them so we'll see you they might be you know a couple days longer this time being down 0.5 of a degree, but that won't affect it too bad, for sure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get this other egg kind of shifted a little bit so that it's not so tall. And these baby olives, they're uh, they're awesome. Like they're fairly easy to get started in eating and whatnot. Um, they hatch out really large too. Like I think most of mine are usually around 20 plus inches when they hatch. We got here two, four, six, two, four, six, eight. Try and do these like this. I also avoid having any of the eggs touching the walls because what you don't want is you don't want condensation uh, coming in contact with the eggs. Same thing with dripping from the roof, you don't want that either. up top same thing here uh, another reason why I want to move to the bigger containers is that's a lot of egg in a small container so the further into incubation the eggs go the more kind of gas exchange you get and you want there to be enough oxygen in the container to support all those eggs but I have like one of these containers has one slightly larger hole and the other two containers have in opposite corners uh, a small hole and then the incubator is rather humid itself and it's got a fan in the bottom pulling air down so there's a lot of air circulation so I usually don't run into uh, any trouble 
but that is one of the reasons why I would like to go with some bigger egg containers. So yeah, there you go. All of Python eggs. So I'll throw them in the incubator. Uh, 87.4. I'm assuming it'll probably be 85 to 87 days would be my guess till these things hatch. Uh, and then I'll probably do an update. And the female, I've got her soaking. I'll give her a nice scrub down. And then same thing with the cage. Give the cage, give the hide box a good scrub down, change the substrate. And I would assume that she'll just resume feeding this week. And uh, she'll be good for another two years. But anyway, thanks for checking it out. And uh, we'll see you guys in a couple days probably.